Dear students, we are moving to the next topic from the fourth module, the quantity theory of money or the QTM. The quantity theory of money is also called as the transaction approach or the Fisher's quantity theory of money. The quantity theory of money is put forward by Professor Ewing Fisher in the year 1911. He states that the quantity of money is the main determinant of price level. According to him, other things remaining the same, as the quantity of money in circulation increases, the price level also increases in the direct proportion and the value of money decreases and vice versa. Moving on to the equation of exchange. Fisher's equation may be explained with the help of the following equation of exchange. MV is equal to PT, where M is the total supply of money, V the velocity of circulation of money, P the general price level, and T the transaction of goods. So, Irving Fisher's equation goes like this, MV is equal to PT, or P is equal to MV by T. Now let's see what is V or the velocity of circulation of money. It simply means the number of times a unit of money changes hands in the course of an year. If, For example, if one unit of money changes hand 10 times on an average during one year, that means V is equal to 10. The transaction approach proceeds with the idea that the price level is determined by the demand for and supply of money. Fisher also extended the equation of exchange to include bank deposits, that is M dash, and their velocity V dash in the total supply of money. Over the years, the definition of quantity theory of money has developed as inclusive of all money in circulation, including currency and credit. So, the final equation of Fisher's equation is like P is equal to M into V plus M dash V dash, the whole divided by T. M dash is the bank money or the credit money in circulation and V dash velocity of bank money or the credit money. Fisher's approach can explain the causes of hyperinflation and also explain certain long-term trends in the prices, but he cannot explain the normal time inflation. This is the shortcoming of Irving Fisher. Next is the Cambridge version of the cash balance approach. It is the modified form of the transaction approach. All the shortcomings of transaction approach is cleared or modified by the second version called the Cambridge version. The famous economist Alfred Marshall put forward the modified approach which is known as the Cambridge equation and later it was modified by his followers A.C. Pigou, D. H. Robertson and J. M. Keynes. 
According to the Cambridge version, the price level is affected only by that parts of money which people hold in the form of transaction purpose and not by the MV as suggested by the classical theorist. So the Cambridge equation is M raised to D is equal to Cambridge K P Q. The explanation of M raised to D is equal to K P Q where M raised to D is the demand for money, Q the real income, K the proportion of money held as currency and bank deposit. The term K is the Cambridge K. So finally, Alfred Marshall and his team modified the equation like M is equal to M raised to D that is equal to KPQ where M is the stock of money, M raised to D demand for money, PQ is equal to Y that is the real income and K the proportion of money income. So finally stock of money is equal to the demand for money that is equal to real income into the proportion of money income. So at equilibrium M is equal to KPQ. In the cash balance approach K is more significant than M for explaining the changes in the purchasing power of money. This means that the value of money depends upon the demand of the people to hold money. The detailed notes are given to you. Please do refer the notes when you go through this video class. And thank you for listening patiently. Thank you so much.